Okay, we're back with uh, motorcycle ignitions. We're sticking with um, basically uh, we're two stroke ignitions, and we're um, we're done with points um, to a degree. Um, what we're looking at now is uh, the next phase of ignition systems, which is um, varying trigger systems, which differ to the points. As we know, the points close builds up a magnetic flux inductance in the in the coil. Points open, collapses into the secondary and produces a spark. So in this case, um, we're looking at engines that uh, now have a a um, solid state switching instead of the points, which is a transistor switching, essentially. Um, a um, transistor is used in various forms and the low um, voltage base of the transistor is switched, um, whether it be by a uh, magnetic pulse or sensing a voltage uh, condition. Um, it does the job of switching what would be points. So the coil fundamentally works the same way. It works by induction, which is built up, and whether that's built up by uh, fed by a battery or in this case um, by a charge coil, by a rotating magnet in the engine. Um, it's still doing the same thing of building up the primary voltage and the only difference is, is that the, uh, the triggering when we open the voltage is done by a, uh, a transistor mechanism. Now the transistor mechanism um, uh, does vary um, and back to these coils that I showed you before, this one with the points where it builds up, a, uses a DC component of the rotating magnets, builds that up in the coil and then point switch it. Um, the next version of this actually had a, uh, a small ignition module um, which was a transistorized control of the uh, ignition and the later one incorporated here and um, that was essentially the same. It, uh, it relied on the uh, DC charge charging up the ignition coil and then when uh, the time is right um, this would uh, trigger um, and open the circuit for the primary and drop the primary um, field into the secondary to produce a spark. Now with this particular one um, the, 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 the trigger me mechanism is varied but this particular tr um, trigger had a certain uh, component in that it exhibited a faster switching time with a rising um, speed of the, uh, of the rotor past and that rising switching time means that it switches on or switches, the, you know, opens the points earlier and earlier the higher, higher RPM it has. So it has an inherent timing curve characteristic um, where um, as the engine increases um, it gives it more and more advance. So it's good for a four stroke application that type of coil because we need an advance in our four stroke engine. Um, there are other types that um, work slightly differently and um, you will see um, these type of configurations where we've got a charge coil and we have a separate pickup coil which is actually placed in the unit and then we have a simple um, transistorized control where the pickup coil actually triggers the base of the transistor and then that um, opens the circuit from the charged up um, ignition coil. That's the charge coil that charges the primary of the ignition coil. Um, now this unit looks similar, but this unit is a CDI, and a CDI does not work in the same way by charging up the primary side of the ignition coil, but we'll get onto that. Um, other types of triggers we saw um, in um, not motorcycles, but in cars, uh, are an optical trigger, which simply has a, um, uh, an optical sensor and LED opposed to each other and a plastic disc with slots in it and when the slot opens and allows the light to go through there it uh, again triggers the, uh, the power at the coil um, and it collapses the primary field into the secondary and we get a spark. Um, the next type of one um, is common to um, go-kart engines which is this type of configuration um, now this is a KT100S, uh, KT100 Yamaha go-kart engine, very popular engine, very common engine. 
Um, so you would see this type of arrangement. Now again, this is this is a, a DC type of charge system. Some people call it CDI, but it's not CDI. Okay. Um, it has a uh, a system whereby um, the DC component of the voltage rises, and then when the transistor um, senses the the peak of the voltage, it actually opens the circuit, which produces the open circuit like opening points and produces the secondary spark and that's the system you have here's the coils running past here okay to this is running past here to charge the primary side of the coil okay and this maintains between here and here maintains through the transistor box the transistor control box to ground so the voltage rises in this in the primary and then this transistor opens when it reaches the peak of voltage and you get an open an open you know an open collector or whichever um, and um, the sparks produced in the secondary when the field collapses so again this is an induction based system um, like the others uh, that I mentioned above okay so there's not to be confused with a CDI system a CDI system works differently okay it um, I will explain the CDI but to identify a CDI okay a CDI system also looks quite a bit different okay this is a common type of CDI base plate um, for a dual cylinder engine with two separate coils this one's a cdi unit with uh, for a twin cylinder two stroke with one coil two leads so that's a wasted spark system um, and the coil sparks every half revolution of these magnets um, yes two strokes and four strokes both use wasted spark systems with the dual lead coils um, this is a coil off a yamaha 350 twin lc 350 yamaha twin um, again, a wasted spark system. Um, it sparks at every half revolution. Um, so the plugs fire at top dead center and bottom dead center. Now, those systems are all induction systems, in which which I'm which I'm referring to. Um, that charge their um, primary side of the coil and use the induction, collapsing induction in the primary coil, and mutual induction of the secondary coil to produce the spark. Now, the CDI system is is fundamentally different. It, when it actually creates the charge to charge up the coil, it doesn't charge up the coil. It charges up a, a capacitors inside another box. So the coils here charge the, the coil, the, you know, the spinning rotating magnet inside here, and, and charge coils charge up the CDI capacitors instead of charging up the ignition coil. And um, not only that. Um, when it is charging up the ace when it's charging up the capacitors it charges using ac not dc like these other um, inductive systems okay um, now um, when it's charging the cdi when it's charging the capacitors with ac and it's charging those up um, it gets to a point where the the trigger coil um, switches and what it does is, is unlike points that open this, this switch is a closed switch, which closes the switch and completes the circuit between the capacitors and the ignition coil. So the ignition coil is not charged yet until the trigger triggers the CDI box to drop the voltage into the coil. So um, on a CDI coil, ignition coil, it's a low inductance coil. It doesn't use a built up primary field winding it's simply a step up transformer from what's pulsed into it to what comes out in the secondary spark however the voltage you generate here the ac voltage and that's why the magnets are usually quite a bit larger i'm um, in a cdi unit um, the voltage here um, produced is an ac voltage to charge the uh, the capacitors um, and it's also um, well over 100 200 volts um, in the cdi systems on cars you know up four five hundred volts okay in a battery system now some people refer to cdis 
two types of CDI. One is a, is a DC CDI unit, DC voltage, and one is an AC voltage CDI unit. Essentially, they're the same thing, okay? Because they, they both use AC to charge up the capacitors. The difference is with the DC unit that you would have in a car or you would have on a bike as well, um, actually uses DC through an inverter, an oscillating inverter that creates AC and then charges up the CDI capacitors. And then the trigger coil closes the circuit between the capacitors, dumps the, the high voltage spike in it into the ignition coil. So there's no primary field stored and collapsing into the secondary. Um, so we don't have, a, have, to have, to have to have a high inductance coil, we can have a low inductance coil. Um, so that's fundamentally the difference between um, inductive systems um, with points and without points with various kinds of solid state uh, switching sides. I'm going to shut it off now and we'll come back to this uh, uh, next video. Okay, that'll do it for today. Uh, yeah, uh, subscribe, like, etc, etc. And um, next video um, might be a little bit of snow skiing. I just went up recently and um, after that I've a couple of... Uh, um, vehicle repair ones that um, I was going to do as well, but uh, we'll get back to this. All right, that's it for now.